Okay, so head coach Ross of the attacks gym. Behind the camera is Tamara. Uh, in, front of the ca in front of the camera helping me out is Tatame. Uh, I'm going to do this real quick with a long kimono because I like guys don't quite understand. Here's what it is. I'm going to go right into it. First, I want to show you the traditional way of doing long kimono. She's going to grab me here and cock back her fist and pose. At which point, I step to the side, hit, hit, the, hit the upper block, whip down, bring it back down, hand sword. Bam. It works here under these circumstances. However, if she were to attack in any real world way, if she were to grab me, push me backwards and throw punches as I'm trying to do this, I can't do anything. If she were, I'm getting losing, I'm getting hit. If she were to grab me, pull me forward into punches, I, I, same thing, same thing. If she were to grab, punch, and tackle, I'm kicking here, down, 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 boom, boom. I'm, my, my karate, my long kimono is not helping me. Okay, stand up please. <clears throat> if things got even worse, if she had a knife, let's go a little slow here, grabbed me and stabbed at me, and I'm trying to step here, I can't notice what's happening, the knife is making contact as I'm stepping over to make this block. I'm getting beat. If, which is what we see happen a lot of times in the real world, I could be seated, and I could be in my car, I could be at school, there's a bully in class coming up to me. I could be on the bus, whatever situation that I'm finding myself seated. I could even be in my own house, on my own couch, or, or in the bed or what have you, and I'm dealing with an aggressive spouse or, or a significant other. She comes forward, hits me, I'm trying to do like, I can't do anything here. So what I'm trying to get you to see here is that in the real world, what you want to do is craft one single response, which is still effective for basic, for basic beginners for all of these stimuli. The first thing I'm going to show you what we do is we use all of our blocks. All of our blocks. Because we take into consideration height and, and girth and mass and depth your differences. She could be taller than me when she grabs me. And if she punches down, I do an upper block as I take this hand and pin. We could be the same size. If she punches my face, I do an inside block. Okay? She could throw a hook punch. I do an outside block. Okay? She could throw a body punch as she's pulling me in. Bam! Okay, again, I want you guys to see that. What I did was, here, the first one, I blocked and rolled with my elbow. This is something I do a lot. But for beginners, when they pull you in, you want to do a lower block, though. A lower block to the body. Okay? So, first thing you need to do is practice all of your techniques against the blocks. I mean, all of your blocks against whatever attack is coming on this side. The second is, you continue with the base technique here. The base technique, which will be, which will always consist of, if she, in this case, want to go with the slow punch here, she's going to throw three punches, one, I'm trying to fan two, three, I'm going to take this right hand and turn this way, and pin this hand, okay, that's what I want you to see, I'm pinning here with this hand, this hand having blocked this attack, it's going to strike this face with a tiger claw, turning the face away, dragging the hand down, palm heel again, boom, here, shifting, nice hand, okay, now I'm going to turn this way so you guys can see what I'm doing with my right foot here, as I'm pinning with this right hand, I'm stepping back with this right foot, as I hit this knife hand, dragging down, dropping her to the ground. If you guys recall, I made this point before in a previous partial video of mine. Now take this arm, circle it off and across, taking this elbow, shifting across your shin as you're stepping forward into a left bow stance, turns her on to her side. Now you're not just putting your, your knee down, you're flexing back with this arm. It is uncomfortable, isn't it? Uncomfortable, Tiger? Yes. Now what you can do here is, you can either plant your foot on her head, plant your foot on her back, or plant your foot on the ground. You don't even have to follow up. But if you do need to feel the need to follow up, follow up with that hand sword. One technique works here. And watch, the same technique will work no matter what she does. I'm going to go slow for illustrative, for illustrative purposes. Um, where do we put that knife at? It's right there. Right, there it is, okay. Here we go. For the purposes of, uh, of this video, what I want to show you guys very closely here, I can be shorter than her, and she's going to do a stab coming down, do an upward block. Again, same thing, right hand pins, left hand comes down and across, hitting the face, neutralizing the knife, taking her down. Okay? Elbow going across, shifting here, taking the knife out of consideration. You see that? I could just stomp on her head if it's that serious. I could stomp on her back and stomp on her arms. Drop this hand sword on her, I could break her arm by flexing further against my bow stance. Which is something you already learned. Your bow stance, you already learned them as a white belt. Okay? 
Now, I'm gonna twist down. Now let's look at the common situation where you get grabbed, punched, and you get knocked down. They follow you to the ground and keep punching you. Or you get a grab punch and they tackle you and take you down. So it's grab, gonna be the punch. They're gonna tackle, I go down, she's punching. I'm defending his tighter claw immediately. See that pulling him up? Shifting over, you okay there? Snatching over, pulling his arm here, stepping up into the base, flexing, wham! Same technique. Same technique. Now for those of you who thought I did something different on the ground, I didn't. And the same, the same energy that you used that drove me back here and I just shifted from both stance to both stance, that's what I did on the ground. Took a, tackle me down, so I feel I just shifted both stance while blocking right pull over. When I was pulling over, I recognized, you couldn't quite see here, but her arm was close against my arm and elbow. I get my shin, my knee, chin, and elbow here. I mean my knee, my knee, thigh, and hip joint here. I was hyper extending the elbow. That's why I let her go. If I had it would cause some serious pain. But even as I let her go, the momentum of just going here, pulling me right up to my feet, grab the arm again, flex the arm off, wham, hand sword is toast. Now, I'm in school, she's a bully, she's gonna start punching me, I'm seated. Or I could be in the bus and some guy's acting crazy and start punching me, or I'd be in a car, what have you. Alright? Here she is, she's gonna come forward, grab and punch, block, tiger claw, and those still see it. Right hand here, let me turn this way so you can see me. Alright? I'll even go on my knees, which have, which is another part of our training class. I'll block here, this hand is still here, and, I, and because I'm close to the ground, I just simply pull the arm and take that weapon, take my advantage of dropping weight with me. She's throwing punches, throwing punches. She's throwing punches, I'm blocking, take her down, take her down with me, lock up. Same movement, pulling over, it's looking familiar, isn't it? Striking down, bam, you're done. Okay? <clears throat> now, the purpose of me telling you this and showing you this is simple. If you wish to train one technique against one attack, that's your choice, it's fine. But make that technique operational against the real world attacks. Chances are extremely low that you'll be able to take a technique that works when somebody isn't attacking you and apply it the same way when they are. Okay? What I do is, I assume that my opponent doesn't suck and really does have an intention to cause pain. And I use that same method, that same approach, and apply it over each of the major forms of attacks that we're likely to face, that FBI crime reports show we're going to face, that real life fighting experience shows we're going to face. Okay? And these are all basic techniques. These are all white belt blocks, white belt hand techniques. Trans, tra uh, and stance transitions. We know these movements. We know these movements well. We learned all this as white belts. This is what I use as a model here, and this is what my primary problem has been. Most of Kempo, uh, most of Kempo in their IP does not apply their techniques, the same technique against multiple forms of attacks. Instead, they, they actually seek to graft into a whole different technique. What happens in the real world when you don't know that other technique? You only know Lone Kimono, and he's grabbing you by your shirt and punching you. He tackles you, and he's punching you. That's all you know. What can you do? Well, you can get your butt kicked, or you can train more functionally and more conclusively. Okay? More inclusively. That's my opinion on the matter. Hope you're having a good day. This is Head Coach Ross of the Tax Gym helping me out. It's Tatame. Behind the camera, camera is Tamara. Thank you very much for your time.